check out what I just bought. This one's kind of unique and rare. I've never owned one of these before. This is a 2001 Huseberg 500 Supermoto, street legal with a title. Originally it was a 400 swapped in with a 500 engine. And I do have the original 400 engine that the owner said was running before they did the swap. So we'll see, we'll dig into that today as well. But uh, the seller that sold it to me bought it from the original owner who lived in Colorado and rode this thing out there. But you can see the plates from Colorado last registered in 2009. So this bike probably has been sitting since 2009. Obviously does not run. The seller that sold it to me said it's been sitting in his barn for a long time. And uh, he said he never really worked on it. He said he put some gas on the carburetor and tried to start it, but the gas spilled right out of the carb and then it was just parked in the barn since that day. So he's never heard it run, but he said that the original owner sold it to him in running condition. So we will see. Um, definitely gonna be a good project for us today. Um, Huseberg was actually originally produced in Sweden. And then I believe they were in business from 1985 to 2014 where they sold off the rest of their company to KTM and they took over. So they were in business for 25 years. So these bikes were actually very powerful race bikes, but they never were really reliable. And I guess a lot of these earlier models melted down the top ends and uh, were super unreliable. I guess they were hard to start and just not very good bikes. But uh, it was swapped in with a 500, so maybe that makes it more reliable. I'm not sure. So the goal for today is going to be to get this thing up, running, and driving. And uh, we'll see what we can do. I guess the seller said the electric start mechanism is a little finicky. So I think a gear is stripped in there. But he said the kickstart works great. And as you can see, the kickstart is on the left side and the chain on the right side. So... That'll be fun to kick over. I guess these things are a pain to start because they have so much compression. What's cool about this bike is it does have a decompression release and it has a switch for high and low. So when you're riding on the highway, you can put it in high. Um, KTM did this with their bikes, but you weren't really supposed to use it, the seller said. But with this bike, the owner used it all the time, riding back and forth on the Colorado roads. So that's pretty unique to this bike. Has a headlight, tail light, and it looks like it's got an upgraded pipe on here. Big gun exhaust. Tires are getting down there and tread. I don't know if the brakes work, but everything looks pretty rusty. You can see motors are rusty. The chain is super rusty. Foot pegs are rusty. So, you know, it's definitely been sitting for many, many years. Let's get this thing off the truck and uh, start working on it. See what we find. Hopefully we can get this thing to fire up today. All right, little walk around. This bike has around 53 horsepower and weighs about 240 pounds. So it's a pretty light bike. Yeah, pretty cool looking bike. Looks like the battery is right there on it. I don't know how you get that out. It looks a little tricky. Solenoid right there for the starter. And there's a starter. Chain's really rusty on it. <laughs> Looks like oil drain right there. Looks like it has a hydraulic clutch. Then decompression mechanism up there. And the carb is sitting up there. I wonder if that's the original carb or a lot of people swap them out with Makuni carbs. So we'll see. Oh, let's get in the garage and 
start working on it. All right, we got the beast in the garage here. Let's just kind of go over the whole machine and uh, start diagnosing this thing. See why it doesn't start. So, the owner said it had good compression. Ooh, looks like it's got a little, little grip sticking out of the, the foot kick lever here. That's kind of nice, so your foot doesn't slip off. Let's just feel what the compression feels like. Oh yeah, that is some good compression. Can't push down with my hand at all. So that feels pretty good to me. Let's see if the brakes are working. We'll stop on that brake. Yep, rear brake is working and the front brake does work. So both brakes are working. We'll have to get the battery out, try to charge that up. This is probably really old coolant. It's been sitting since 2009. If there's anything in it. Oh yeah, there's some in it. Topped off, so. Hasn't leaked anything. Well, next. I don't think there's gonna be a dipstick. Smells like oil. See if there's anything in there. There's a window right here. I'm not seeing anything in the window, so it's probably a little bit low. But that looks like brand new oil. So somebody just changed it, which might be a bad sign or a good sign. <laughs> looks like the water pump is gonna be right here too. There's a nut on the other side of it. That is weird. It's on there. It's oiled up. Doesn't look to be in the, the best shape. Let's just take that off. Definitely a unique filter on there though. <laughs> wonder if they still sell these. I don't really want to break it. Maybe we should leave that on. Yeah, we might leave that on for now. Until I know I can find a replacement for it. We'll drain a little bit out and see if there's any in there. It doesn't seem like there is. Yeah, that's all dry rotted. Get the heat gun out. It's really not softening up at all. Up a bit. There we go. All right. Let's see if there's any gas in there. Oh yeah. Looks like fresh fuel actually. We'll see if there's any water in the gas. Not a whole lot of gas in there. Ooh, smells old. Smells really old. Doesn't look like any water in the gas though. You can see the tank doesn't have a line on it. But man, that is a strong smell out of there. Let's try to get this gas tank off. So it looks like there's another petcock over here that leads to the uh, the carburetor. So we need to get that line off as well. There we go. That line goes into the carb on the top of the intake there. Huh. Oh yeah, it's got the original carb. You can see. 
I'm not entirely sure how you get this battery out. It doesn't look like it can come out through there. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I don't know how you take that out. But we can at least unplug it. This one out. See if you try to push that out, it hits the frame. That one's sitting right there, positive. Alright, let's see if we get anything. I don't know if the lights are going to light up or not. That's on. Light's not doing anything. Alright, we've got the headlight here. Nothing. Oh, there's electric start. Yeah, it's not grabbing anything. Oh, there we go. Grabs once in a while. The lights are working unless the lights only work when the machine is on. Yeah, I'm guessing you have to have this thing started for the lights to work. But at least the starter does work somewhat. Let's see if I have a socket that can fit in there. All right, that looks pretty good actually. Not too bad. I'm just gonna put a little lubrication down there before we kick it over. This thing's been sitting like 15 years, so. I can feel the piston. <laughs> Let's see if we get anything here. I think we're going to use the electric start and see if it turns it over enough to get spark here. Here we go. Hmm. Not seeing anything. Is there a kill switch on here? Watch it has to be pulled out. All right. We'll try kicking it over. See if we get anything here. So that's not good, we're not seeing any spark here. Let's try to cut back the wire on the spark plug boot here. Uh, there was quite a bit exposed. We'll cut that back a little bit. Could be the spark plug too. This back, quarter inch. Get some fresh wire exposed there. Twist this back in. Okay. 
So I don't know if you guys saw that, but I think I saw it spark like once. I would have liked the, the 10 kicks I did. So that's kind of weird. I don't think there's a kill switch on here either. I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe there's a loose connection somewhere. But we'll check all the wires by the coil. Make sure those are all good. Make sure our ground's good. And kind of go from there. I hope there's nothing wrong with the electrical. I think stators and coils and stuff for this bike are like non-existent. So hopefully that's not the case. We're gonna quick try a different spark plug. See if that fixes our problem. Maybe it's just fold out. All right, looks like we have no spark with the other plug either. So something's going on. So you can see if we follow up the wire from the stator, goes up to here. And it goes into a blue, a green, a red, a yellow, and a black. It goes to this plug-in right here. Let's see if that's corroded. Doesn't look like it. But we'll spray that out with some WD-40 here. One spark, so. Hoping it's not just like a bad CDI or a bad coil here. All right, so unfortunately we have no spark. We did see it spark one time, which isn't a good sign. Um, I could not find a kill switch on here, so I don't think there's a kill switch anywhere on here. Um, so we're gonna test the stator right away. That's the easiest diagnosis. Start with the stator, work your way up. So here is the stator pigtail. So this is directly coming from the stator all the way up, and it doesn't lead into anything else except for yellow wire is going into the rectifier and a blue wire going into the CDI. So what we're gonna do is test resistance, ohm resistance, between the red and the black wire at the stator. And according to the forum, it said measure the red to black resistance on the stator pigtail. It should be 3000 ohms plus or minus 300 ohms. Um, okay, so red and black, let's do that. All right, here we go. <laughs> Zero, doesn't even pick up anything. Well, that's a problem. All right, then there's another test you can do. So, you can measure green to black resistance should be 260 ohms. So green to black, we'll do that next. See if there's any resistance there. All right, we should get 260. Let's see what we get. Oh, we got something. 163 ohms. And it's plus or minus 26. So that one's off as well. Huh. <laughs> and it looks like the stator cover's been off before. So that's interesting. But at least we get a reading there. So another test it said we could do is a voltage test. And it says between your red and black voltage, kick the engine over, it should be 30 to 35 VAC. Anything less than 25, it will not start. So turn our voltmeter to VAC right there. And it should be, we'll go to a setting lower. There we go. It should be above 25 volts when you're kicking it over. Let's see, we get kick this thing over. So I saw it at one point hit 25 uh, volts. So we are getting a reading from there, which is interesting. Let's see if I can do it with the starter here.
All right, so I saw I hit 29 on the voltmeter. So it says anything less than 25, it won't start. So I'm guessing if we had the electric start, it'd kick it fast enough to uh, produce sparks. So maybe we're just not kicking it hard enough. I don't know, but we're not getting an ohm reading between the red and the black wire, so that's suspicious as well. Hmm. I don't know. Let's test the green and the black now. It should be three volts. Try the starter first here. Oh yeah. So I hit 2.9 there. Try kicking it over here. So we weren't getting three, we were getting about almost two when we were doing that. There's 1.8. There's 2.5, yeah. So I'm guessing that's fine too. So, that looks good. The voltage readings look good. All right, now we're getting a reading here, which is really weird. Um, so between the red and the black, now we're at 1,526 ohms. So it's low, but at least the reading's coming up, so. All right, I think we're getting sparked now. I don't know what happened. Either I just disconnected something, or uh, I'm kicking harder, I'm not sure, but. Now we have spark. If you look really closely, you'll be able to see it. It's a very faint spark though. It's not, uh, it's not too strong. But I was reading forums and they said that, that the spark is like that on these for some reason. See that? So it's sparking every time now. So, I think we're good. Try kicking it over one more time here. Right, we're getting every kick. So we've got spark, that's good. So I'm thinking that's why these things are probably so hard to start. You need like the perfect kick to get spark. Like a really, really heavy kick and it needs to spin over that engine fast to uh, have spark, so that could be why. All right, now that we have spark, continuous spark, let's get a compression tester in here and see what we get for compression. It seems like we've got the automatic decompression release with the cable right here. We might disconnect that and uh, kick this thing over, see what we get. Compression should be around 60 pounds of compression with the auto compression release here, so let's see, we might try disconnecting it too. Just see what we get. My leg is already getting sore from kicking this thing over. <laughs> oh, man. I'm gonna have to get a boot on, throttle open. Yeah, we're right at 60, so we should be good. All right, now we somehow have to get this carb out. I don't know if it comes out through here or where. Looks like it might be a little difficult. Try to get this car out. <sighs> yeah. 
Here, it's coming. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> How the heck do you get this thing out of here? There's like no room to work. I don't think it's small enough to go through. Come off. Take that off. Maybe we can get that through here. Wow. Never seen that before. I don't get how that can possibly fit through there. <laughs> what the heck? That is super weird. Maybe it can go through here. Ah, it can fit through the other side. Finally, carb is out. We're gonna replace all the lines here too. Those are all dry rotted. So it looks like we've got a Delorto carb here. Those are the original carburetors that came on here. So that's cool. Bolt here, bottom. I'm guessing that rubber o-ring is junk yet. It's just disintegrating in my my hand here. So that we can change out. Well, it looks pretty clean. Huh. It smells like old gas though. Let's look at that. bad. A little o-ring right there we can change out. Main jet looks like a 170 right there. We can get that out. That's clear. Emulsion tube here. <sighs> That's really clean. It looks good. Got our. I believe this is like a little starter jet, it looks like. So this is like a 38. <sighs> that little jet's a 38. All these are clear, by the way. We've got our fuel screw here. Let's see he turns out. That was one, but one and a half. Take that out. All right, that's just their throttle. See what this one is at. Take that out. I believe this is our pilot. <sighs> <sighs> oh, 
and that is clear as well. That's a 45. Probably replace that O ring too. It's pretty brittle. And then our have to grab onto here and pull. There we go. Let's see how our float feels like. No holes in the float. Okay. The, the very tip of it I can see is worn off. So hopefully that's not uh it causes us any issues. We can get the, the seat out of there. See, nine millimeter. There's a little gasket on there too. See that? Seat looks good, no gunk in the seat at all. Hmm. Yeah, carburetor looks absolutely perfect. That's weird, I wonder where it was leaking from. Maybe from the bowl. So maybe this gasket it was leaking from, or the gas lines maybe. So we're gonna replace that, clean everything out, blow through everything with the air compressor. And we should be good to go. All these little O-rings we can replace too. All right, we got brand new gas lines going on. And then this one's gonna go over to here. All right, we just went ahead and filled this up with gas, just cause I don't wanna take this carburetor back out again um, if it leaks, so. Right now, it is holding, not a single leak from the carb. You can see it's filled up all the way. So, I think we're gonna be good to reinstall it. All right, we got the carburetor all cleaned out. Let's quick check the valves. We gotta take the valve caps off up here. And then, there's a little port right here that you can see the timing mark from. Hold on by something here. That wire. <sighs> All right, there's the stator. It looks like those are the flywheel marks right there. Let's see, we'll take off the little cap right here. And would we have been able to see those from there? Yep. Okay. So I believe those are the those are the marks we're looking for. The top dead center right here. The line there on the stator lines up with the line on the flywheel. So now we're gonna go up here, take these caps off, and see if those rockers are loose. These. Get those. So typically the intake valves get tight. Check and see if these are tight. That can lead to hard starting and uh, lower compression. So hopefully these will be good. I'm yep, so we've got to turn over the engine until we 
coming tapped it's centered again here. All right, we're at tapped at center. And uh, valve clearance feels pretty good. The valve clearance are the, on these are pretty small. Intake might be a little tight. I can't feel any clearance on the intake. Yeah, no clearance on the intake here. So for both the intake and exhaust, you want around four thousandths of an inch, or between 0 0.08 millimeters and 0 0.012 millimeters. So. Let's see if we can get a feeler gauge in here. Let's kind of feel around. Yeah, exhausts feel good. We don't want those to be tight. Alright. Now we're gonna screw all the way in. And then the other one we can loosen up. They're hard to get to. Alright, so we're working the back one over here. And you can see the feeler gauge just moves in and out there, so. That one's perfect. Alright, now we're working on this one. So you gotta come back from the other way. A little tricky to get to. Right there. And check it again. So you can see it just slides in, so those are good. All right, this air filter is coming off. It's just disintegrating, so we'll have to take it off for the time being. It's looking really bad. Yeah, that's pretty gross. Take it off the cage here. It's an interesting cage. Yeah, that's pretty gross. We obviously need a new air filter. So we got the carburetor back on. We didn't put the boot back on yet because I might try to squirt some gas down there to get it to fire up. But uh, everything else is in place. Let's add a little oil to it so that it's filled up. Let's see, I'll try tipping this straight up and down. I think we're a little low. Nope. All right, it did not fill up that window, so we're gonna add a little bit of oil. Shouldn't take a whole lot. Just gonna add some 10 W40 wet clutch. There, now we can see it in the window. So it wasn't too low. And if you tilt it a little bit this way, it goes right to about halfway. All right, let's get some gas in here. All right, we've got the choke on. Gas is going to the carb. Let's see if she'll fire up here. Let's see how many kicks this is gonna take. Probably a million.
So I can kick it with my left foot here. My knee's already hurting from kicking this thing over. Let's try bump starting it. All right, does not want to bump start. We're gonna put a little gas down the carb. Oh yeah, my knee is really hurting. It's not easy to kick left-handed. So it will not kick start and it will not bump start. Um, I looked up how to start this thing and it's pretty much the same procedure with any four-stroke bike. I've been doing it, but maybe I've been doing it wrong. So what the forum said was pull in the decompression lever with choke on, kick it over with the decompression lever held in about five times, so kick it over five times should be easy to kick over because the decompression lever is held in. Then what you want to do is release the decompression lever and kick it over until you feel tap dead center. You'll know you're at tap dead center because it's really hard to push over right here. So then what you want to do is hold the compression lever in, the decompression lever in, and kick it over from tap dead center a couple more inches. Like right there. And then you're going to Release the decompression lever and release this up and then you're not holding any levers right now. Give it one good kick and it should fire up. If it doesn't, turn the choke off, try again. So we're going to try that, see what happens here. Kick it over a couple times. Let go of it. Tap it center. One big kick here.
headlight's not working. Sounds pretty good. Smoking a little bit. But we did add oil to the cylinder, so. Cannot believe it fired up. <laughs> that is awesome. Sounds really good. I am pumped right now. Woo! Oop. <laughs> Do we have the choke on still? No, oh, choke was off. I believe. That's the choke right here. Yeah, that's off. All right, let's see if she fires back up here. All right, I cannot believe this thing fired up. We actually got to ride it for a little bit as well, so that was sweet. Um, and it shifts through all the gears nicely, clutch works good. So, it was running pretty good. I went to fire it back up after we stopped, and now it's not starting again. And I'm getting really sick of kicking it over. So, we are going to dig into the other engine here, the spare one, and see if we can get this electric start to work. Um, here is the spare engine. It looks like somebody was in the side cover, so hopefully that Bendex gear or that uh, gear for the starter isn't missing, which I'm thinking it probably was robbed out of here, but we will check it. And then there's a couple other parts we can go through too. All right, let's see if we can open up this cover here. Looks like there's one bolt holding it on over here. Get that out. Let's see if this cover will pop off of here. Oh, we got a barely held on here. cover looks like. Yep, so the starter comes in through here, moves this gear, and I believe this is that starter clutch piece that uh, is bad on the bike right now. Looks like they robbed the cam chain out of it too. Looks like the whole top end was taken apart. So unfortunately, it looks like that is missing here. There's the cam chain, it looks like. Um, valve springs, and there's a sprocket gear for the cam. Oh yeah, this cam was damaged. So I wonder if he replaced the cam in the 500 or the 400. Here's a part for it too. Huh, some bolts through these. Another cam. So he must have been playing around with the cam. This one looks brand new. That one looks pretty good. So I don't know if he replaced everything. Now here's another cam. 
Why does he have so many cans for this bike? <laughs> this one's got the automatic decompression on it. Looks like. Hmm. Not sure which bike that's for. Maybe it's an upgraded cam. Not sure, but this is all included with it. It says Huseberg on it, so I don't know. Weird. So either this engine was rebuilt or he was just replacing all these parts. These are for the rockers, it looks like. So hopefully he replaced the rockers in it. That'd be nice. Bag of parts here. Head gasket. And what else do we have? Looks like we've got all the old or the new seals. Some bearings. That looks like part of the starter gear there. Some O-rings, some valve seals. So I don't know if he was planning on rebuilding it or if he rebuilt it and used all the new stuff, you know? So if he did, that'd make me feel a lot better. So I'm really not sure what's going on with it now. We are going to check the spark, make sure we still have spark, and then we'll check compression. Um, and we'll try to get this electric start working. So I read in the forums, these have a mechanism on the electric start that if you're not getting enough voltage, it'll just spin and won't crank over the engine. So let's try a fresh jumper on it. Maybe we lost spark. Let's see. Get this plug out of here. If it's wet, means we're getting fuel to it and it's probably not sparking. Could be timing as well. Yeah, you can see how wet that plug is. So something's going on, see that? It's pretty wet. Let's try the electric start here. Let's see what happens. working. <laughs> Alright, electric start is now miraculously working. You can hear it turning over the engine. Watch this. But it looks like we don't have spark now. <laughs> what the heck? Are you guys seeing any spark? Something get pulled out. Huh. Not even a little spark here. Alright, I took off the boot. We've got it dark in here. Now I'll check this out. It's sparking pretty good there. So without the boot on, every time so I think it might be the boot all right different boot on there there we go now it's sparking all right I think we lost spark again yeah no spark again I don't know what's going on with this thing all right now it looks like we're getting good spark again This is really, really strange. If anyone has any ideas what's going on, let me know in the comments, but check this out. Now we have good spark again. So good spark again, and it still won't fire up. So we're gonna quick check compression again, make sure that's still there. But it is really weird. 
All right, getting our compression tester back in here. Maybe it uh, lost compression. I don't know. We'll find out right now. So now we can do it with the electric start, and it should be normal compression. So it should be like right around 150 is what you get with electric start. We'll do throttle open and see what happens here. That's about 160. So we've got plenty of compression. This thing should fire. I don't know what's going on. We have spark, we have compression. We're getting fuel to the carb. I put gas directly down the carb. That didn't work either, so. I do not know. Well, I spent the last probably two hours kicking this thing over, charging my batteries, trying the electric start, and uh, this thing won't even pop over. It's not firing at all. We have spark, we have compression, and we have fuel. I tried dumping fuel in the cylinder, in the carb, nothing. It will not even try to start. So the only thing I can think of is timing. I'm wondering if when we rode it, it uh, skipped a tooth or something. Maybe the tensioner was off and uh, the cam chain's loose even though it didn't sound loose. I don't know, maybe it skipped a tooth somehow and the timing's off and not sparking at the right time. That's the only thing I can think of. It did backfire once out the pipe and typically a sign of timing being off is backfiring, so it's a possibility. But my leg's dead for today, the batteries are all dead, and uh, I think I need a little break from this thing. It's becoming a pain in the butt. So we're gonna pick up on this next video. I'm just happy we got this thing to run and drive today, and like I said before, it sounded really good. So if we can get this dialed in and uh, you know have it start reliably, It'll be a really nice bike. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video picking this thing up, diagnosing it, going through the whole thing, doing the first start and the first ride on it today, which was very lucky. And then we're back to square one now. So <laughs> hopefully next video we can figure it out. But if you guys have any suggestions, leave it in the comments below. And uh, we'll try to get this thing figured out next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next one, and until next time, we are out.